Hello, everyone. My name is Malvika Bott, and I am here on behalf of the Environmental Data and Governance Initiative, or EDGI for short. Today, I will be speaking a little about using Jupyter Notebooks to empower the public with environmental data. I hope to give you some insight into our project's goals and our approach to data processing. Then I'll give you a demo of one of our Jupyter Notebooks, talk about our use of notebooks at our public events, other uses for our work, and our next steps. But first, a little introduction to EDGY. We are a network of over 175 members from over 80 different academic institutions across North America, composed foremost by grassroots volunteer efforts. We are an international organization, though most of our membership is based in the United States. EDGY, through an effort to protect environmental data in the wake of President Trump's election in 2016, has served as a watchdog group. EDGY created an unprecedented project to duplicate and monitor repositories of public data that are vital to environmental health research and knowledge. More broadly, our organization aims to work with the productive frictions between data justice and long-standing principles of environmental justice. Environmental data justice is a movement which calls for increased open and participatory data in order to document environmental racism and inequality. Earlier this year, we developed a group within EDGY called the Environmental Enforcement Watch. Here are our goals to draw large-scale public attention to the lack of environmental enforcement, and to inform new visions of alternative forms of public engagement. You may be wondering, why now? Violations of federal environmental law are chronic and routine. Former United States Environmental Protection Agency officials themselves have spoken out in criticism of EPA efficacy and enforcement has declined precipitously under the Trump administration. Until very recently, just the beginning of September, enforcement was effectively on hold due to COVID-19. However, data about environmental enforcement is legally available to anyone. The United States Community Right to Know Act allows us to see all of the violations, enforcement, and compliance data for our nation. This data can be used to inform our activism. Specifically, we can see data on the Clean Water Act, Clean Air Act, and Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. Greenhouse gases aren't regulated in the United States, but data from the Greenhouse Gas Reporting Program is legally available to us. Unfortunately, the data is only accessible through an EPA website called ECHO, also known as Enforcement and Compliance Online. You can find it at echo.epa.gov. The way ECHO is organized is not at all user-friendly. Only the last 12 quarters are visible through the EPA interface. The records going back farther than that are only accessible through really complicated CSV downloads. It is important to note that the data is organized based on how the EPA itself works. If we ask the question, who is this database for? We can see that it's built to make things easy for facilities to report and specifically not to make it clear to communities what impacts they might experience from it. This includes things like how worried they should be about non-compliant facilities in their area of concern. So what's the good news? EDGY has made this data easier to query to answer specific questions that people and communities might have. Our project, the Environmental Enforcement Watch, is holding a series of workshops. All workshops begin by making a customized report on violations, inspections, and enforcement of environmental laws in the congressional district, state, city, or watershed of interest to participants. The reports are based on data from the Environmental Protection Agency's ECHO database that I mentioned before, and it's aggregated through our Jupyter Notebooks. EDGY effectively copied the EPA's data into our own database hosted at Stony Brook University. It is updated every two weeks. We archived it like this instead of querying the EPA directly in case the EPA decided to remove the data under the new administration. And then this is where our Jupyter Notebooks come in. 
We host the notebooks on Google Colab, which allows people to easily pull requests from EDGY's copied EPA database and then create tailored reports based on state or municipality. The notebooks allow people to identify specific facilities and areas in least compliance with these federal laws, as well as add some contextual data that helps paint a picture of what is really going on, such as demographics, prison proximity, watershed, and more. The limits are only the EPA data itself and as far and as fast as we can code. EDGY has worked with schools, university classes, local environmental groups, and held discussions with other environmental organizations using these notebooks. One notable partner is the Sunrise Movement, the group which spearheaded the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is a congressional resolution that lays out a grand plan for the United States to tackle climate change. Introduced by Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez from New York and Senator Edward Markey of Massachusetts, the proposal calls on the federal government to wean the United States from fossil fuels and curb planet-warming greenhouse gas emissions across our country. It also aims to guarantee new, high-paying jobs in clean energy industries. Now I'll take us through one of our Jupyter Notebooks. So here is our notebook, which is right now in Google Colab. This notebook was created for an event in partnership with Sunrise Boston. So all of the congressional districts are related to Massachusetts. Um, at the top, we have some information on how to run a notebook for people who are less familiar with this entire process. And I've gone ahead and run the first two cells, which take a little bit, but are basically just importing the main code libraries. We can skip ahead to the cell where we choose a congressional district. First, when we run the cell, we can see a map of the congressional districts we can choose to look at. Here we have Congressional District 4, 8, and 7 in Massachusetts. The next cell allows us to choose one congressional district to look at out of a drop-down list. So here we can look at, let's say, Congressional District 4. And then we can look at which kinds of facilities the EPA tracks in this district and across Massachusetts as a whole. This might take a little bit of time because there are thousands that's loading. There we go. So we see here that there are 24,000 facilities in Massachusetts currently tracked in the ECHO database. After this, we see some more specific numbers of how many facilities are regulated under the different acts within the district. We see that here there are just 14 facilities reporting greenhouse gas emissions in this district. Let's say we want to look more closely at these 14 and see which one is leading the pack. We can do this in the next cell where it says run the cell to choose how you want to zoom in on the data. This is great because you can read a little bit more about the greenhouse gas reporting program, including what the EPA says about it. And then run the cell. It's already chosen for us, so we can continue ahead. We look at chart trends here. So this will show us this district's data compared with Massachusetts as a whole. Here we can see that the blue shows us the rest of Massachusetts and the orange is just Congressional District 4. Next cell, we can rank and map facilities within the district. Here we see the top 20 facilities with the most greenhouse gas emissions, but we know there's only 14, so we see the 14. And here we can see the first district with the most greenhouse gas emissions. Here we can map it out to get a better visualization. I can note that all of the maps are created with folium. This is fantastic because we can kind of hover over it and get a sense of where each of the facilities are, which we are looking at. And the very last cell is just about accessing your files. So if you want to download the data tables, the images, or the CSVs, then this is a much easier way to do it. This is really great for our report making workshops and other events if people want to study their congressional districts later on or look at the more active facilities after the event. 
I also wanted to talk about some of the other projects that we are in the process of creating and finalizing. One I am personally very excited about is the Environmental Justice Notebook. The Environmental Protection Agency defines environmental justice as the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people, regardless of race, color, national origin, or income, with respect to the development, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. Edgy says that this goal will be achieved when everyone enjoys the same degree of protection from environmental and health hazards and equal access to the decision-making process to have a healthy environment in which to live, learn, and work. The government and corporations perpetuate environmental racism through the placement of oil pipelines, chemical plants, toxic waste dumps, and polluting factories, which expose low-income minority communities to known carcinogens, contaminated water, and other harmful pollutants at a higher rate than predominantly white, affluent communities. This is all documented, so it is critical for us to make this data publicly easily accessible and understandable. The data visualizations in this Environmental Justice Jupiter Notebook will explore the disproportionate impact of environmental hazards on people of color. Let's talk next steps. We really would like to experiment with using the PySpark API. We hope to use PySpark to avoid having to maintain either the MySQL or Postgres databases. With PySpark, we could store the EPA Echo CSVs in a Google Drive folder that would be much more intuitive to interact with. We hope to continue hosting Environmental Enforcement Watch events and workshops during which we discuss data science, data visualization, report making, research contextualization, and story gathering. The workshops will continue documenting and analyzing all forms of environmental harms, including corporate and government practices of manipulating and withholding data, as well as government failures to adequately collect and use the data. We want to keep facilitating this collaborative action-based research that creates civic technologies, environmental data infrastructures, and equitable and transparent data care practices. With goals of data transparency, we recognize that justice looks different in this age of datafication. We can use these tools at our disposal to advocate for better data practices and intelligently critique the limitations created by this facility-centric approach that the ECHO database provides us. A long-term goal of EDGY is to inform EPA visions of alternative forms of public engagement, basically a Green New Deal for environmental data. Our projects are all open source, so we would love for you to join the work and be a part of our passionate, diverse team. Find us at github.com slash edgy dash govdata dash archiving. You can find our organization at our website, envirodatagov.org and at environmentalenforcementwatch.org. Follow us on Twitter at envirodatagov and at eew underscore network. Thank you so much for listening. I would like to shout out my wonderful team who has made this project possible. Kelsey Breesman, Steve Hansen, Gil Jang, Eric Nost, Chris Sellers, Paul St. Dennis, Lourdes Vera, Sarah Wiley, and Edgy. Thank you.